And now we take you to Evangel Church in Tallahassee, Florida, to another powerful, life-changing message. For more information, visit our website, evangelag.org. Well, good morning, and welcome to Evangel Church Online. I'm Scott Lingerfelt, the administrative pastor here at Evangel, and uh, things are looking a little different around here this morning. Uh, we've had to um, make some uh, really hard decisions uh, this past uh, few days, and we've decided that uh, in the best interest of our church people and keeping people safe, that uh, we needed to go back to virtual online services for the next three Sundays, and uh, we will um, restart our in-person services on October the 25th, Sunday, October the 25th. That is the plan to go back to in-person services on that Sunday. But uh, many of our um, leadership team, um, people that's on our worship team have uh, become sick, tested positive, and uh, so this is uh, just an opportunity for us to try to get in front of uh, this virus so that uh, uh, we can protect our people and make sure that we're doing the best for Evangel Church and for uh, those that attend. And so bear with us and um, just make sure that you're tuning in on Sunday mornings at 1030 um, for the next three Sundays. And... Um, we are expecting God to do great things, even in the midst of chaos, you know? And um, <clears throat> when Pastor Ryan had talked with me on Friday and asked me if I could uh, speak today, obviously I had to quickly get uh, something together, but I began to pray and I began to ask the Holy Spirit to really give me some direction as to uh, what he would have me to say to encourage uh, this, this body and to encourage all of those who are tuning in. And uh, my mind immediately went to the book of Philippians. Uh, it is uh, one of my most favorite books, but it's, it's a book where Paul is in the midst of, of just crisis, and uh, yet he gives us some just amazing counsel in this book. And you know, I've, I've talked with uh, a lot of uh, pastor friends of mine around the nation who have been going through the same things that we've been going through, obviously, with the, the pandemic. And the one phrase that I hear most often from them is, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you begin to talk about the future and begin to talk about what you're going to be doing in the next month or two months or, or even beginning 2021. And, and a lot of their conversations begin with, I don't know. And so we're, we're kind of in that, that pattern of where we, we're just unsure exactly what's taking place. And, and I, I feel like that the Holy Spirit really wants to, to, to help us this morning just to take a deep breath and relax and know that he is in charge. And so this morning, I, my message that I want to share with you is called Say No to Anxiety. And I'm reading from Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. Paul says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon, <laughs> and that is some good words right there. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. The Apostle Paul is kind of like the New Testament version of the unsinkable Molly Brown. 
Now, if you don't know who Molly Brown is, her real name is Margaret Brown, but she was a, um, a rich socialite who actually survived the Titanic crash. And when she was rescued, she demanded that the, the, uh, the one that was guiding the, the lifeboat that picked her up would go back to the crash site and to begin to look through all of the debris and the bodies that were floating on top to see if there was any survivors. You see, that's kind of like Paul. Paul is uh, unsinkable. Paul refuses to go down with the ship, literally. I mean, three times Paul was, was shipwrecked and only to go ashore on one of those occasions to be bitten by a snake. Uh, Paul has had his fair share of uh, disappointing days. Uh, he was beaten with fist and with rods. He's been scandalized. He's been scrutinized. He's had conspiracy theorists begin about him. He's been the focus of riots and death threats. And still, Paul is very focused and resilient, almost flawlessly, I should say. But the only thing that can seem to discourage Paul is the problems that his young churches are going through. And when you read Paul's uh, letters to those churches, you might come away with the idea that Paul was continually frustrated and that his work wasn't very successful. But in reality, Paul's work changed the world. I mean, literally. And we're a product of that. All of us have read Paul's letters. And Paul's letters are continually being read uh, today. And it's as if Paul is still passionately preaching to the culture that we live in today. And when we look at Paul's situation here in his letter to the Philippian church, we see that Paul's in prison. And this is unlike any of the other uh, prison stays that Paul's had, especially the one that he had in Rome, where he was able to move about freely and have visitors and his friends come to see him and encourage him. But here Paul is actually in a dungeon and he's chained between two prison guards. And so for 24-7, Paul cannot move. He's right there in that one space. He's in intense pain and suffering, emotionally and physically. Yet, it's amazing that in the midst of all of this, Paul's got joy. Paul's got joy in the middle of a dungeon chained between two prison guards. I mean, he's not happy about his situation and who would be, but he's got this amazing joy. He's got joy because, listen, Paul's got a right understanding about his suffering. In other words, he knows that God has allowed for him to be in this prison so that the gospel message can be preached. In Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, Paul says, And I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything has happened to me here has helped to spread the gospel news, or the good news, I should say. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. You see, folks, the bottom line is joy doesn't come because of what happens to us Joy comes from what happens in us. And I realize that as we navigate through the, these times that we're living in, in 2020, we've got the COVID-19 pandemic that has caused such heartbreak throughout all of the world. It's caused great worry and anxiety about our health and our well-being. It's caused businesses to shut down and jobs to be lost and people to be worried about how they're going to supply for the, uh, and, and provide for their families to put food on the tables and to take care of their families. And on top of all of that, we've seen our nation divided by such hatred like we've never seen before in our lifetime. And never before 
in the history of our nation have we seen a presidential election that has so much at stake. I mean, folks, there's just a lot that we're dealing with right now. A lot that can cause worry and anxiety. A lot that can just cause people to, to wonder um, what's going on. To say, I don't know. So how in the world can we have joy and inner peace while living in chaos? Well, I've got three uh, nuggets of encouragement I want to give you from Paul's letter to the Philippians here. And I just want to, I want to begin with number one, and that is choose to rejoice no matter the circumstances. Choose to rejoice no matter your circumstances. In Acts chapter 16, it gives us an account of Paul and his missionary buddy Silas being arrested because they had prayed for a young lady who had a spirit of fortune telling and they cast out this demon from her and it made her employer very mad. And so the city rose up against both of them and they, they came after them, they stripped them, they beat them with rods and they threw them into a dungeon and they chained their feet and their hands together. Doesn't sound like a great experience but Acts 16 25 tells us it gives us a little glimpse into what was going on that first night that they were in prison and it says around midnight Paul and Silas were preaching I'm sorry they were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening they were praying and they were singing hymns to God and most of all the others were listening now any one of us can sing on a good day I mean yesterday was uh, college football if your team won you can sing today uh, listen if your bonus check comes in you can sing uh, if uh, if your um, if it doesn't rain on your beach vacation, listen, that's a good day. You can sing about that. And these seem to be kind of like ordinary situations and circumstances. But there was nothing ordinary about what Paul and Silas were experiencing. Yet they had joy. It took an extraordinary joy, though, to sing and to praise God in the middle of that chaos extraordinary joy rejoices no matter what has happened no matter what is going on at the time even if your heart is breaking in the middle of your song none of us can escape pain and suffering and grief that's going to take place in our worst worst moments in life but any one of us even in that hour can rejoice and listen, it's both good and bad that in that hour of difficulty, people are listening and they're watching to know what your faith is really like. Do you really have faith in Jesus? And what is that like? Simply put, they want to know that your faith is working. And anyone's faith can work on a good day. But when the chips are down, those that are around us they want to know if our, if our faith is legit. They want to know if it's the real deal. And they're watching, and they're watching closely. And bottom line, you must not go into that hour of crisis without a genuine, ongoing faith in Jesus Christ. And listen, nobody schedules crisis. Nobody looks at their, in their calendar and says, okay, on October 24th, I got nothing going on. You know what? That's a good day for a crisis. Nobody is scheduling crisis in their life. So you've got to continue to have this ongoing, genuine faith in Jesus Christ, even when you don't have a crisis. So that when those moments come, you can show those around you that it's real. That your faith in Jesus Christ is real. And then you will be able to say what Paul said in the beginning of uh, the book of Philippians. Again, I say rejoice. Now, the second little nugget that uh, Paul shares with us here is make sure that you're secure in your foundation in Christ alone. After Paul instructs us to rejoice always, 
he gives us this fourfold reminder in verse six. He first says, don't worry about anything. And then pray about everything. And tell God what you need. And then thank him for all that he's done. And the word tells us there that it's then that the peace of God will be like an army marching around your heart and your mind, literally fighting off the anxiety that's coming up against you. You see, Philippi was a very populated city with uh, retired Roman soldiers. And so, like in any military community, they understood the lingo that Paul was using in regards to uh, armed services and that the, these, this army, that God's army is surrounding you and protecting you from this anxiety. And so they would have quickly embraced that image of an army. And Paul tells us that it's God's peace that will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's God's peace that will march around your heart, march around your mind, fighting against potential anxieties. And that's the foundation that you can trust. That's the foundation in Jesus Christ that we need. And listen, this is not some kind of religious-based, complicated wish list, faking it till you make it, feel better joy. It's an honest-to-goodness relationship with Jesus Christ that will transform you and will cause you to sing even when you're in prison, to sing even when you're in shackles, to sing even when you're in the middle of chaos and you don't know what tomorrow looks like. Thirdly, Paul tells us to develop the discipline of saying no to anxiety. It's a discipline to say no to anxiety. And this is not as complicated as we might make it out to be. If you're anxious about a situation, most likely it's because you've been thinking about that situation. You've allowed that situation to mull over in your mind constantly. You've, you've gone over the pros and the cons. You've gone over the, the what ifs. You've gone over everything that seems negative. But if you'd like to stop from being anxious, you'll have, you'll have to be intentional about thinking about other things. You're going to have to be intentional about not dwelling on those anxious moments. And this will take great discipline in your life. But Paul was clear in his instructions in Philippians chapter 4, 8, 9. I want you to look at this because Paul tells us very clearly here, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. How many anxious thoughts are started about rumors? You hear a rumor and it starts that anxious thought process in your mind. You begin to dwell, it, uh, dwell on it. You begin to mull it over in your mind. And Paul says, don't think about the rumors. Think about what's true. What is true? What is honorable? The things that are decent and fair. Think on it. What about the things that are right? And pure, listen, even when you're not going through an anxious moment, you need to be thinking about things that are right and pure. That's only going to be, uh, you know, healthy for your spiritual um, mind and growth. That you think about things that are right and pure. Think on what is lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy. Think about these things. But this is going to take an intentional focus on our part. You know, it's like athletes who, who get in a zone. We've, I, I, I grew up watching Michael Jordan play basketball, and there were times when he just could not miss. Everything that he touched went into the basket. Every shot that he took was golden. And it was like uh, he just was perfect. And it, he would say afterwards, I was in a zone. And he, can't, he could not be stopped because he was in that zone. The, the game actually slows down for them. 
I'm a big Kansas City Chief fan, and Patrick Mahomes is such a young quarterback, but the game has slowed down for him. And so he sees defenses in a much slower uh, movement than what he used to, and it, it enables him to be more accurate, more focused in his passes. And these athletes, when they're in a zone, when they're very focused, when they're intentional, they, got, they have great success. Focus on God's word. What else is true and lovely and admirable and worthy of praise and, and, and just and, and pure? What else is there in life but God's word? We need to focus on God's word. Zone into his promises. His word reveals who he is. It's the only thing that really is true and right and pure and excellent and praiseworthy. I mean, you can, uh, you can look at Romans chapter 8. Uh, verse 28, and we know that God causes everything to work for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That encourages us this morning. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Second Timothy 1, 7, for God gave us a spirit, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of self-control. Jeremiah 28, 11, I'm sorry, 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. That's good to hear, especially in the situation that we're living in today. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon that is fashioned against you will succeed. Praise God. And we, we need to be concentrating on this truth. We need to be praying these, uh, these scriptural prayers. We need to be uh, relying on the promises of God's word. Psalm 3, 3 says, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory and the one who holds my head high. Listen, this morning, some of us, we need our head held high. We need to be looking up instead of looking down at our situation. We need to be looking up at the one who is walking with us through that situation and will deliver us from that situation. It may be just that simple to zone in on the positives and to reject the anxieties so that we can tap into to God's power for our life. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Maybe you're struggling with anxiety right now. Maybe you're looking at the, the landscape of all that we're going through in this whole situation and you're, you're just wondering what's going to happen next. And you're allowing those things to just continue to be processed in your mind and it's brought grief and, and anxiety and worry to your life. Listen, this morning I want to encourage you Go to God's word, begin to latch on to God's word, begin to pray God's word, begin to, to, to recite God's word. Let God's word be that, that, uh, that army marching around your heart this morning, marching around your mind, giving you confidence that he's with you. How else can we sing in the midst of our chaos? And so this morning, if, if you would like prayer, Listen, we've got uh, people that are monitoring our service online this morning. And if you would like prayer, I, I encourage you to go to evangelag.org backslash prayer and, be, and just write out your prayer request. And just let us know what it is that you want us to pray about. And listen, uh, even in this time where we've, uh, we've shut down the offices, we're going to be praying for you. We're going to be uh, listening to those prayer requests when they come in, and we're going to disperse them among our, our leadership team. We're going to be praying for you and, and seeing God do great and, and, and mighty things in your life this week. And so I encourage you this morning. I encourage you to say no to anxiety. Amen? And I, I want to thank you for, for joining us this morning on our online service. And um, as I said, we're going to be uh, continuing uh, the online service through October the 18th. And we're going to be back in the sanctuary in in-person service on October the 25th. That's the plan right now. Now, during that time, our offices are closed. So I just want to let you know that if you do need us, please call the church number, 850 and 
we will be there to help you in any way we possibly can. We're, we're not going to be more than a phone call away. Even though we may not be in the office, we still want to hear from you. Um, also, I just want to uh, take this moment to, um, uh, to let's continue to worship the Lord in the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, I want to thank you. When we were in the shutdown, the last, uh, the first go around, uh, you were just so faithful, and uh, you you provided, in, in, um, and you were just faithful in your giving. And I, we just want to thank you for that. And we ask you to continue to do that this month. And so um, uh, you'll see on the screen uh, ways that you can give. There are four ways that you can give. You can give by mailing in your your offering. You can um, give online. You can also text your gift, or you can use the Church Center app. But this morning, we just want to thank you for being a part of this service. And let's pray and ask God's blessings on the offering. As well, we'll also uh, dismiss at this time. Father, we just thank you for your amazing grace to our life. Your grace that is greater than all that we go through in life. Your grace that is sufficient for us in this time in the middle of chaos, in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of, uh, of our nation being divided, God, we know that you are there, you're faithful. And Father, we just, uh, we pray for uh, those that are giving this morning. Father, we just pray your blessings upon them today, God. We thank you for your faithfulness to our lives today. And Father, as we go from this time, we just pray, Father, that you'll just uh, minister to those who are sick in their body this morning. Father, we pray that you would touch and bring healing to those that uh, have tested positive and are not feeling well today, Father. Lord, we just know that uh, it is your power, your strength in us, O oh God, that can restore us and bring us back to health. We pray for health and renewed health in our bodies today. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We pray right now that God uses this message to plant good eternal seeds deep into your soul. For more information, visit our website, evangelag.org. Evangel's all about making the name of Jesus famous and his church glorious. We love God, love people, and love life. And we're here for you, working to help draw people from impossible situations into a loving and friendly circle of hope where answers are found and acceptance is given. We invite you to join us for any of our services, Sunday mornings at 1030 and Wednesday evenings at 7. We're located at 2300 Old Bainbridge Road in Tallahassee. We have fantastic programs for kids and youth and small groups to make deeper connections. And we pray that God blesses you richly and abundantly as you continue to seek Him first in all of your life.